Judy, that's a weird looking calendar. But it's a calendar that marks holiday time. I think it's kind of cool. You know what's even better than holiday time? Oh, what? A brand new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at Garland Nursery in Corvallis helping to kick off their holiday open house. And today, Saturday, William and I will be here hosting two seminars. So come on down and see us. And speaking of the holidays, we're going to be talking at Timber Press about some great garden book gift ideas. But coming up first, how to get your power tools ready for the winter. It's that time of year to think about cleaning your tools for the winter. I'm with Wayne Sutton from Steel. Hi, Wayne. Hi there. And so, you know, there is some things that we should do with for our tools just so that they're working good the next time we need them. So what should we be doing? Well, at this time of year, it's a good time to think about getting them ready for the winter. And to do that, the key thing and what most people think about is the fuel. Mm. And the fuel spoils. If you're going to not use the machine for 90 days, you definitely want to get that fuel out of there because that's about the shelf life of fuel these days. And that could really ruin that engine and then you can't use that machine again. Well, that it costly repairs oh, sure. and that's what we're trying to avoid. And so the best way to get around that is to first remove all the fuel out of the tank of your equipment, whether that's a chainsaw, a blower, hedge trimmer, trimmer, it doesn't matter. When you do that, make sure to use a funnel and a can and properly dispose of it oh, when, you're, when mm -hmm. you're done. And then once that's completely empty, you want to take a product like this. Mm -hmm. that's, this is Steel's Moto Mix. And this is a specially uh, patented fuel that actually is extremely good for the engine. So you put a little bit of this in the tank, start the piece of equipment, and then just let it idle until it runs out. And that's going to leave it protected so that in the spring it'll start right up again. Oh. And if you don't use the equipment a whole lot, you might as well just use this all the time because this stuff is fantastic fuel. And really have a good long, long life for your machines here. Your absolutely, tools. absolutely. And is there something we should do, for, especially for a chainsaw, for the, the chain itself? Yeah, there is. Any piece of equipment with a cutting uh, attachment needs to have some service. And in this case, you take the barn chain off of the saw, clean the entire area, make sure that the chain is lubricated and then when you store it, make sure to store it in a nice, safe place where the kids won't get to it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, in the spring, when, when you get to use it again, it should start right up and run, and your chain will be nice and lubricated and not rusted. Hedge trimmer is the same thing. You want to lubricate that blade so it doesn't rust up over the winter. Oh, and I noticed you have some gloves on. Should, is that something that we should think about? Absolutely. When you're doing this kind of stuff, always wear gloves. Protect yourself. Things are sharp, you know. <laughs> also, uh, on the chainsaw, you would think that you've purged the tank of all the gasoline, but on the other end, the oil tank, you want to leave it full. Because if you uh, drain all the oil out, things can dry out in there and maybe not work in the spring. And then what do we put for there, for that section? The, the bar oil. Okay. normal bar oil in there yeah all right and then you know this is lovely and i love hearing all about these tools but it's still a lot of work for me so do you have any other kind of tools that i could use in my garden well you know there's a new answer to that and it's a really good one all right how about something like this okay this is a battery power oh, blower fantastic. that all you have to do is give it a push and away you go <laughs> and best of all the battery on it also fits a lawnmower a string trimmer, a chainsaw, a high reach tool, all sorts of things, very same battery. So you just buy one battery and you can run all the tools. Oh, that is fantastic. You people at Steel have everything kind of covered. We're trying to do that, yes. <laughs> and so I do notice that you have some safety equipment here, so we always have to remember safety. Absolutely, and it's also a good time of year. If you have a pair of shaps for your chainsaw, Go ahead and wash them. Get them fixed up. They'll be ready for spring again. They're okay to wash. Ah, that is good. And ear equipment, ear, ear plugs too. That's right. Hearing, eyes, and wear all the safety gear that's available because it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, we want to be able to garden all year round and be healthy for that. That's right. Well, if you have any other questions, please go to gardentime.tv. We'll cook you over to the Steel website and you can find out all about these great tools for your garden. Thanks so much, Wayne. Thank you.
Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Is your garden in need of refreshment? Hi, I'm Sarah, and there are plenty of things in bloom at Portland Nursery. Come check out our beautiful fall color to perk up your garden. At Portland Nursery, we consider fall the second season, and the gardening opportunities are endless. Establish next year's trees, replace lettuce and greens, or get a jump on onions and garlic. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people, on 50th and Stark and 90th and Division, or at portlandnursery.com. If you build it, build it right. Build it to last. Don't just build it for yourself. Build it for the next generation. Build it with Par Lumber. And keep building the Great Northwest. Par Lumber is celebrating 85 years as a local, family-owned company. From our house to yours, we send a heartfelt thank you. I'm at Garland Nursery today with Erica, and you know the holidays are coming, yes. and so we're looking for gifts for the gardener. So I see you have some ideas here. What you have? Well, you know, the terrariums have been popular for the last few years, but they still are popular, and what a great gift for a gardener or a non-gardener. And there's so many different styles. You know, there's something that hangs, there's something that sits on the ground. You can plant them up. You just put a little rock, a little soil, choose some cute little house plants like these right here that are beautiful. Also, to make it super easy, there's a kit. <laughs> That is nice because everything's in there. You don't have to really go get all these little pieces. Right. So you've made it really yep. easy for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. The only thing you have to get is the plants to go in it. Um, and there are air plants that can go in it. So that makes it really easy it, for those that don't like to water. Look at this one. Can you hold on to that oh one? Show gosh. us that one. It's so cute. Uh, you know, this is so simple, but yet so elegant and fun to sit on your kitchen counter. It's just little gravel, a little bit of a tillandsia right there. You just mist it every once in a while. Um, take the lid off, do that. And if you have a hard time getting into the pot that you're working on, oh, look at tools. this. tools. We love tools. Little, little um, yeah, terrarium tools for you. Well, I love this display behind us because you have made like a buffet for terrariums. Yes. You have everything there, and yes. that new piece that you have is gorgeous. Yes. So tell yes. us about yes. that one. Well, it's a molten piece, so it's actually a warm piece of glass that they sit on this tropical wood, so it melds to the wood, and there's no piece that's alike. So it's just really cool, and it has this like turquoise bottom to it, so gorgeous. And you don't even have to put a plant in it. It's like a piece of yeah. art, but it yes. is beautiful. You could even put candy in it. Ah. <laughs> well, you know what I like, too, is that here at Garland, you have all the pieces for us, so you just kind of yes. can make yep. it. Yep. We all, all the you're people here. here too that can answer questions. So that is wonderful. Yeah, we'd too. love to have them come out and look at it. Ah, well, I'm going to go talk to Brenda now. So, Brenda, Hi. some other ideas for us for gifts for the gardener? Yes, yeah, succulents are also a fantastic idea for gardeners. Indoor succulents, and in, great. Um, where you have like three individual pots with either all the same or all entirely different succulents. Also, something in a bonsai pot, a little cactus garden in a bonsai pot, or maybe just one plant in in um, oh, the Mexican pottery, lots of nice color and something very um, unusual. Or an already to go indoor slash outdoor protected um, succulent garden. It's nice because it's either a how to or mm -hmm. it's a gift to go because we all have no time yes. this time of year. Yes. So you really have something for everyone. Yes. And speaking of how to and gift to go in the holiday season, William and Judy are going to be here at Garland Nursery on Saturday mm -hmm. the 21st and they're going to talk about succulents and terrarium garden ideas at um, 2 o'clock and at noon they'll be talking about how to make over your outdoor and indoor planters for the holiday days so we hope you can join us. It's gonna be really fun today and so for what else is going on I'm gonna come back and talk to Erica. On Sunday we have a wonderful Thanksgiving centerpiece class by the White Rose Florist and as well as a fairy garden class for all ages. Fairy gardens are still popular <laughs> and so we're doing that class as well on Sunday plus wine tasting on both days so and s'mores. I can't forget the s'mores. Oh. There's s'mores by the fire so we're gonna have all sorts of fun out here. Uh, so even if it's cold you have somewhere to warm up. Yes. That's a great absolutely. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to come on down today, this weekend, Saturday and Sunday to Garland because there's so much going on. You can see all of these really nice gifts for the gardener. There's beautiful other displays, Christmas gifts, Christmas displays, um, and see William and I. So go to the website and you can find out all the times of what's going on. Thank you so much and we'll see you later today. Yes. Thanks, Judy.
It's getting to be that gift-giving season, and so I'm with Tom Fisher from Timber Press. Good morning. Morning, Judy. And you have a great um, ideas for our Christmas giving for gardeners and for children. So let's talk about some of the ideas that you have for us today. Sure, sure. Our first book, Gardening in Miniature by Janet Calvo, is so much fun. It tells you how to make these charming little miniature landscapes that involve plants, little bit little miniature furniture, ornaments, all sorts of things to create these magical little scenes and all sorts of different s kinds of themes, uh, patios, little ponds, um, all sorts of things. And it gives you the information about where to find the, the, the little parts you need, the mm -hmm. plants, how to put them together, how to care for the plants after you put together your little miniature scene. So it's, it's both inspirational and practical. It's something you can do with your kid. It's so much fun just choosing the plants, putting them in the little scene, choosing the furniture and the other ornaments and accessories. And uh, for a rainy day during oh, the winter, perfect. it's like the perfect project for, for parents and child. Yeah, and you could even do them for the indoor plants or outdoors. Sure. So really, a lot of great ideas in that book. Yeah. And then I love this. I mean, who didn't like Winnie the Pooh as a kid? I know. But to even bridge that gardening and that book. So this is a fascinating book, The Natural World of Winnie the Pooh by Catherine Alto. Talks about the sources of the Winnie the Pooh stories. A. A. Milne lived in the south of England near a forest called Ashdown Forest, which was the inspiration for the Hundred Acre Wood in the Winnie the Pooh books. And so it gives the background of the forest, all the features that existed in Ashdown Forest, eventually found their way into the Winnie the Pooh books. Oh, so, so clever. much of the Winnie the Pooh books are based on reality. And so you can read about these, you can read about the bridge where Christopher Robin dropped off the sticks and watched them <laughs> flow underneath. You can read about hun Winnie the Pooh's honey, bear honey tree where he found the bee's nest, uh, the sandy pit where Rue played, they're all in this book. And there's just so much fascinating background information about A. A. Milne himself and Christopher Robin and uh, about E. H. Shepard, the illustrator who brought all these wonderful characters to life in the classic books. So if you love those books as a child, you'll find your, your memory so much enriched by the information that Catherine has assembled in this book. And it's really fun to share with your kids as well if you've read the books with them. Yeah, it is so nice because it's the backstory, the whole history about that book. So exactly. that's wonderful. And then speaking of children's books, another favorite. Yes, ours. Beatrix Potter, who uh, published and wrote so many of these delightful children's classics like The Story of Peter Rabbit and Jemima Puddle Duck and mm -hmm. all the rest. Um, she was actually a very keen gardener and throughout her life, as well as a wonderful uh, amateur naturalist and illustrator. She didn't illustrate just her books, she also was a wonderful botanical illustrator wow. and uh, created these gardens in the north of England. And so this is about her gardening life, what she was interested in, how all these wonderful plants found their way into, their sto into her stories, um, and also fascinating facts about her life. She was responsible for setting aside thousands of acres of conservation land in the north of England, which created the beautiful Lake District that we know today. And you can still, you can visit her garden, and there's information about that in here, as well as many, many of her wonderful illustrations and about her childhood, her fascination with plants and animals as she was growing up. Wow, you know, even for children, this is a great book, but I think adults are going to love it too, just for all that history of that Oh, exactly, great exactly. And to find out what a multidimensional person she was and how, how interesting she was in, in all the, the various facets that she applied her artistic talent to. Uh, well, and speaking of artistic talent, this is kind of like a how-to book for art the artist in us. Well, yes, there's, <laughs> as you may know, there's a huge surge of interest in coloring mm -hmm. books, both for adults and for kids. Uh, and But we decided we would like to do one focusing on the natural world. So the designs in this book by a local artist, Zoe Keller, who is a wonderful artist, are all really based on the natural world and different, different aspects of it. Deserts, rainforests, the ocean, uh, the temperate forest. And so all the animals are very accurate, and, but they're arranged in these beautiful compositions that really challenge your imagination. And you know, it really makes you <laughs> want to get out your colored pencils or your crayons and start, and start working on it. And again, this is exactly the sort of thing you can do with your children. Right. Um, you know, you can take one page and your kids can take the other exactly. page. You can have a contest. You know, you can go <laughs> wild with your colors. And then in the back of the book, there's fascinating information about the actual plants and animals in each illustration. So you're not only having fun coloring the illustrations, you're learning about these animals, these plants, these, these natural environments oh, in which they occur. Great. 
Yeah. You know, all of these books are something that you, the whole family can work with during these um, kind of gray days of winter and also gifts to put under the Christmas tree. Go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to Timber Press and you can find out where to get these books online or at your favorite bookstore. Thanks so much, Tom, and happy holidays. Thanks, Judy. Same to you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Based on reviews, I found Capital. It was an excellent experience. I felt very comfortable, especially being a single woman. Get moving in the new 2016 Subaru Outback 2.5i Premium CVT, only $26,926. Lease just $258 per month, plus get complimentary season passes to Timberline and Mount Hood Ski Bowl. When I hear stories from other people about car buying experiences, they're horror stories. And mine, I just left with a big smile and I've been smiling ever since. I got it my way on the parkway. Venture into a magical world of ice skating lights and artisan vendors during Christmas in the Garden at the Oregon Garden. Enjoy a traditional Christmas market with handmade gifts, mold wine, cozy fire pits, carolers, photos with Santa, and even an ice skating rink. Then stay the night at the Oregon Garden Resort in historic Silverton. Christmas in the Garden is open through New Year's with activities changing daily. Visit OregonGarden.org for details. Create a new holiday tradition at the Oregon Garden. So I'm with one of my favorite people, Brian Bauman, and we are out at Bauman's. And, you know, I have to say right off the bat, mm -hmm. and you know this because Mom always looks you up when she's here. Every single time I'm here, I take home one of those delicious sugar-free Marion Berry pies to Mom. And... That brings up the question about pies, because you guys really, you, you have all kinds of great stuff for Thanksgiving, don't we you? We do. I mean, everyone thinks about us for pumpkin patch, which is sure. great. Lots of people, we just had a wonderful season, but um, we're still going. We still got yeah. stuff going on at the farm, and the bakery is working overtime right now, getting uh, pies ready for Thanksgiving. And I like that you currently have all kinds of stuff for Thanksgiving and the pies, but you have some really adorable decorations too for the tables and everything. It's really clever what you've done here. Well, um, lucky for Garden Time viewers today, um, we actually give people a chance to pre-order their pies for Thanksgiving. Nice. And we had all these extra plants for centerpieces today. And I wanted to say thank you to all the Garden Time viewers Aww. for watching and, and seeing us on. And um, anybody who calls in today and pre-orders a pie for Thanksgiving, you just have to pick it up by Wednesday this next coming week, uh -huh. you will get a Gerbera Daisy for oh. free with your pie order. These right here that we're looking at. That's right. Oh, those but are you lovely. just got to let us know when you call that you saw it on Garden Time this morning, and um, we'll save one for you. That's we'll very see. clever. Yeah, and they make these Gerbera Daisies, like you were saying, are perfect yeah. for a table centerpiece or something during the holidays. And they bloom and bloom and bloom. They just keep going. And so we, we got creative. We had a little bit of fun. Uh -huh. We took some of the pumpkins and squash that we had um, from October, pumpkin patch. And um, we actually, what we did is we took and hollowed them out. And one of the things, back to, we just had a customer, and she goes, well, I don't want the gnats and everything to get all over this. Actually, if you take a little bit of water, mix a little bit of bleach in, and oh. just rinse out the inside with bleach, it keeps it lasting longer and keeps the gnats and fungus away. Yeah, there's way. nothing to draw them then. Exactly. Yeah, that's very smart. And then you can take those Cabrera daisies that you got with your pie order and just slide it right back into the that. pumpkin or squash or gourd that maybe you have that you used as decorations on the front porch and you're done. And everyone's nice. gonna say, aren't you so fancy? It's, yeah, they'll think you're, you're friends with Martha Stewart. That's right. And I love these, these different aloes and sedums and, and gourds and pumpkins. Same concept. Um, hollow out your squash or your pumpkins, put a little bit of bleach water in there, and then just plant them up with some fun stuff. Granted, these are not gonna last for, sure. Sure. you know, they'll last through Thanksgiving, great. But like, it's just like any pumpkin on your front porch, once you carve it, it, it's only gonna last a couple days. But then you can replant the plants in something else. Exactly. And I always like to tell people, you know, put a little plate or a dish underneath them on the table, because yeah. they are gonna leak a little bit of yeah. water maybe or something, and that way it keeps them, your table nice and clean in case you have a... Well, you know, and everybody, everybody thinks about Bauman's for October, certainly. Right. And right. then, of course, now we know that Thanksgiving here, but you guys are you're year round, and so next would be the holidays. And I love that you have a great mailing system here for things that you right. purchase. Tell me about that. So, Christmas is a lot of fun on the farm, too. And we have all of our jams and jellies we make from our berries mm -hmm. that we're growing in the summertime. We have different gourmet food products from all over the region. And what we do is we tell people it's, it's as easy as one, two, three. Step one, pick out all your favorite gourmet food products. 
And then step two, bring it to us and we'll help you pick out a box or a basket that you can put, fit everything into. Nice. And then step three, just bring your address with you. We'll package it up and ship it out for you. Wow. So yeah, that's it. You're done. That's awfully easy. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, and then you, but if you just wanted to ship some jam or something, you could do that. You'll do that for them too, right? Any time of the year, we'd be happy to do that. But especially, it's nice. Um, people want to send something from home to their yeah, family. Certainly. And um, there's not a whole lot more home than stuff from from balance. It's, it's yeah. so true. Well, you know, for more information on this great place and to find out all the things that are happening through the whole year, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over and don't forget, order your pie and pick up your free Gerber. If you're watching the show today, let them know. Thanks so much, Brian. Thank you, William. Now's the time. Standard TV and Appliance Black Friday deals going on now. Why wait till the end of the month? Standard is cutting prices right now. Save big on a stainless steel Whirlpool French door refrigerator, only $9.24. Get a Samsung front load washer, now only $4.29. Save 40% on a deluxe stainless steel Whirlpool dishwasher, only $2.99. Plus, save up to 64% on a Simmons Beautyrest Queen mattress, only $3.88. Hurry, Black Friday deals won't last long. Standard TV and Appliance. Kick off your holidays right with a stop at a Vintage Flea. One stop puts you right in the middle of a holiday shopping paradise. We have everything from new handcrafted gifts to unique vintage items, plus Christmas trees and wreaths. There is something to please anyone on your list. We even have holiday treats to enjoy. Check us out November 28th and 29th at Margie's Farm and Garden. Make your holiday shopping easier with a stop at a Vintage Flea. So many of you might remember that next June we are going to Ireland on a Garden Time tour. Now, the producer of the show got clever during a webinar and said if we sell out we'll all wear kilts, except we didn't know where to get kilts. So he is, has two friends that he's friends with that have the 67 Music Celtic Music Promotion Company, and really it's globally, it's all around the world. They were connected to Stumptown Kilts. Now, because of that, we wanted to do a little interview with Stumptown Kilts and figure out, you know, some history and, and how these things are made. So tell me how you started this company and a little history about the kilts. Uh, well, we were a, a group of kilt wearers, really, and kilt lovers that uh, got together. There were things about kilts uh, that we could buy that we didn't like, so we decided to design our own. And what is the history of them? Because, you know, in a lot of social media, I get comments, you know, you're going to Ireland, but you're wearing kilts, and that's right, Scottish. Right. <laughs> so it originated as, as a tunic called the Great Wrap, um, which uh, the Scottish supposedly got the idea from the Norse as they were coming in and invading. Um, so it was a big wrap. They would lay it on the ground, pleat it, and then it would wrap around. It was their, it was oh. their, their sleeping bag, their tent, their wear. Yeah. Um, and then that went up to the first tailored kilt for the Scottish Army, which was a box pleat, which is what we modeled ours afterwards. So, and a box pleat is mirrored on each side. Oh, so normally, like, I've worn them before, but they were all, like, this yes, way. They weren't... Yeah, and that's okay. called a knife pleat. All so, right. So there weren't many, many box pleats available, and so we decided to go with the box pleat, and then we just uh, modernized it. And is the color, because I see a lot of solid colors, that's also a modernization of right, the Right, right. So we don't do tartans. Yeah. Uh, in Scotland, uh, the tartan is a family thing. Um, in Ireland, it's a county thing. So, All yeah. right. And we, we modernized it for fashion, so we stay away from the tartans. And you and your business partner here really did come up with this whole creative process, so I'm going to take a couple minutes and actually ask him how that process yeah, works, yeah. all right? Yeah, Let's great. run over there. Nice. So now I'm here with Todd, and Todd, we're gonna talk about the, the really great construction of these kilts. So why don't you jump right in and tell me what it is that really makes them different and, and such a good, good value. Well, the first and the most obvious is the fact that it uh, is adjustable in the waist sizes. Oh, wow. So it's a lot of fabric to start, and they wrap around like so. Snap, snap on this side, snap, snap on that side. So it can grow or shrink as you grow and shrink. And it just is always comfortable no matter like what you're wearing along with it. And that, that makes sense to me because a lot of times, I, in fact, even on your, I think it was on your website, I read a comment about how a woman said, you know, I love these because if I 
eat and my belly bulges a little, I just snap it and make it wider. That's a great addition, I would think. Yes. So then do you have to wear a belt with them or is that an option you can or cannot choose? Um, well, we often say when we're bending that it's a good idea because once your buddies figure out they can just tear this right <laughs> off of you, it's good to have it like secured <laughs> on. You don't want anybody embarrassed. No, no. <laughs> and then the, the, the little purse thing that you see on a lot of kilts, where is that at on this one? Oh, well, we've taken the idea of the sporn and modernized it, so we put a pocket in here that's sewn separately. Oh, clever. Doesn't look bulky at all, and uh, we call it the secret pocket for, for reasons, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, and, and that's just, that's all put in. You're not taking that on and off. It goes there all the it time. It just is always there. Well, so I, well, not I, that. that yeah, is, that, that's that just occasional. Not always there. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do now is actually give you a little fashion show. We're going to go through some kilts, and each of us are going to pick out some of the ones that we're going to try on. So we're going to do that now. Well, now that we have finished our fashion show, I do have to ask one question. As yeah. a gardener, how is gardening in a kilt? Oh, they're fantastic. One, they're airy. So if you get a little heat buildup, uh -huh. you just kind of swirl it out. <laughs> <laughs> and then the bandolier, you can hook up different tools to them. So and so they great. really are utilitarian yeah. as yeah, well as fun to wear. You get them dirty, just throw them in the washer and dryer. And where is it that people can get these? Oh, well, you can come see us on Thursdays and Saturdays from noon to 6. We're open at 2020 Southeast Bush Street. Or you can give us a call for a personal kilt fitting at 503-839-7604. Um, or uh, just hook us up on our website, stumptownkilts.com. Or you can like us on Facebook. We like to be liked. There you go. And I have to tell you, they're really very comfortable. So if you're thinking, now, which one did all of you choose from Garden Time? Well, there's a lot of colors. And we're going to put the picture that we chose on the Facebook page of Stumptown Kilt. So you can see yourself which one we chose. We also wanted to give a big thank you to 67 Music. You know, you can go there and see all of their wonderful different music and, and just get really into Celtic music through them. To find them, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. So uh, we're supposed to say something all together here now. Slaughter! Slaughter. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for watching today, and we hope to see you at Garland Nursery, where William and I will be speaking later today. And also, we wanted to remind you that next week is our last episode of Garden Time on this 10th season, but don't worry, we'll be back in March of 2016. In the meantime, you can always go to gardentime.tv or follow us on Facebook or Twitter. We thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Garden Time is going to Ireland. Join William and Judy as they tour the Emerald Isle, visiting some outstanding private and public gardens. For more information, go to gardentime.tv and click on the airplane. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.